Uh, here I am. <laughs> I just say this is almost crazy that we're gonna get, actually get started. Like that was so fast. Oh, nice. I mean, and look at you. Wait. Okay. Let me do the so, intro first. I want to talk okay. about your family. Yes. Because that, that's like okay. I'm uh, okay. Let me do the intro first. Okay. <laughs> so hi everybody. My name is Ben. I'm the creator of the Beanie Sleeper, the head wrap with the built-in sleep mask that blocks light and keeps your head warm and comfortable without overheating. This is Scarlet Red. If you're feeling naughty, you can do the Scarlet Red. It's very nice. Um, anyway, I want to introduce my guest. I am such a fan of what she's doing, and I'm so glad that she's on today. Um, her name is Maureen Maloney, and she is, okay, yeah, get this. She's a biologist turned documentary filmmaker. I know. Her current project is called Voice of Vanilla. It explores the lives of women vanilla farmers in Madagascar, exposing the global forces that impact them. I mean, that's a, that's a mouthful, and that sounds like a really... I, I, I'm so excited to talk about that, but first, I've got to know, you probably get asked this a thousand times, where is that hammock? Where are you? <laughs> I am in my backyard. I I was gonna uh I was going to go, you know, talk to you from from my bed, but it's such a gorgeous day and this is my favorite place to nap. I nap here whenever possible. <laughs> Maureen, I'm telling you, I can cuddle just as well in a hammock. <laughs> yes. I am not Yeah, if, I am it's, not if, it's, if it's two people. If it's two people, so anytime you want to come on over to Denver. Oh. <laughs> I am going to get into Denver, get to Denver, hopefully the end of June. Anyway, that's a whole other story. So I'm dying to know, how do you go from biologist to documentary filmmaker? Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good question. It's a long journey. I will say that. Um, I was, so, you know, I, this was back in 2007, and, and I was working in a lab, and I had become a biologist. I mean, I love biology, the study of life. What's cooler than that? But I had really thought that I was going to go and do all this, you know, world-changing research and stuff. And, and then I realized that a lot of people are doing research. It gets published in these scientific journals that nobody can read. And that's where data goes to die. And nothing ever really comes of it. Maybe occasionally a journalist will stumble upon it. They'll misinterpret the research. A clickbait. It's really kind of depressing. And um, a little oh, frozen. Oh no, I might have to. I didn't. I wasn't thinking about. Actually, let me turn my. Um, and I'm an amateur. Yeah, do your thing. I can edit. <laughs> Give a little wait. Okay. On my five G. No, 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 do your thing, and I can okay, edit all this. Okay, so. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, I see it. Hi, Daryl. Daryl says I'm an amateur. I'm a very amateur golfer. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, then one day, and I was, I was watching a lot of documentaries at that time. Um, in 2007, like Blackfish had just come out, and they were just, yeah, you know, amazing. so amazing. Yeah. And, and I was learning so and much scary, from them. And, yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. And then I met a documentary filmmaker and it, she was about my same age. We, we were, we had a lot in common and, and it really kind of hit me at that point. I was like, Ooh, maybe I could do this. I had been doing photography for most of my life and I, and, and I really liked the idea. And so I took this like four day filmmaking boot camp just to, just to see. And I loved it. I got really positive feedback from the instructor. And I just immediately got a camera and started shooting stuff. Wow. Yeah. And of course, at that time, I didn't know, you know, what I was doing. I really had basic camera skills, basic editing skills. Uh, but I just started shooting videos here and there. Uh, and then shortly after that, I joined the Peace Corps and went to Madagascar. And that's how I became connected to Madagascar. And of course, you know, shot lo lots of videos there and, um, you know, continued traveling. I did a few di 
different internships to learn more and then eventually ended up here in Denver where I joined a group called Women in Film and Media Colorado. And that's where I mm-hmm. finally really started getting the connections and the information and the mentors that I needed to be able to, to make a, a full on documentary film. I got to tell you, there are so many things <clears throat> that you touched on that I want to go into. One is um, so biology, very regiment. It's, it's research, it's numbers, it's things, but it's very in a box, right? It's very here. And yet you're like this amazing entrepreneur. I mean, you kind of said, forget that. I want to do this, get into boot camp. Did you join the Peace Corps after you were in that uh, film boot camp? Yeah, that- yeah. It, en- it ended up being, I had applied to the Peace Corps and then due to some medical issues, didn't get in right away. And so I didn't think that I was going to get accepted uh, for a while. And and so, you know, I was kind of making other life plans. And then the Peace Corps ended up uh, dropping into my lap and I and I left I think it was like six months after I had taken that class. Oh, wow. So you were like, and you brought your camera. And I, I brought imagine. my camera, yeah. <laughs> and you were, okay. So that brings us to Madagascar. So mm-hmm. this is this is not your first though. You did you did some other short videos of something yeah, else, Yeah, right? I've, I've made <laughs> short documentaries uh, and I've made a docu-series uh, which is on YouTube um, and a and I and I created a, a rea- an unscripted TV pilot. So I, I've done some other shorter things but undertaking a feature film is definitely a, a greater beast. <laughs> oh, I, well I can't imagine since I've never done that but I understand taking on something bigger than yeah. you ever thought you could. And I think that's crazy. <laughs> so, so now you're in Madagascar. Mm-hmm. What was it your intention to meet these women, to document these women, um, vanilla farmers, or did that just happen? How did that happen? Yeah. So actually that only happened fairly recently. So the, 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 the region of Madagascar where they grow vanilla is the Northeast. I actually mm-hmm. lived in the Southwest. So I lived among fishermen, not farmers. But what I saw there working with the people in this village was the everyday impact of climate change that, that, you know, it, you know, I came from the U S where people were still debating whether or not climate change was even real. And, you know, the people who did think it was real treated it like some future problem that we would have to deal with. And it occurred to me there that it, it not only, uh Oh, Oh, it not only was an everyday reality for them, but they had already been dealing with it for a few decades And so I became motivated to tell that story. I also just really fell in love with the Malagasy people. They're, they're really fun. And so I wanted to bring that back to the U S too. So, okay. I love this. So how does, hmm, you didn't go there with the intention of, of making documentary, a full length documentary that happened after yeah, no, not that, that totally happened after. It really, it, okay. I would say Madagascar kind of changed my trajectory because that's where my thinking really switched from, like you said, numbers <laughs> and, and stuff like that to being focused more on people and, and realizing that, you know, ultimately we are saving the world. We, we want to save the world because we want to preserve it for for future for yeah. our children uh, but also that there are these people around the world who had nothing to do with the environmental destruction that are the ones being impacted by it and so yeah that's when my my focus in life <laughs> really kind of switched to telling people's stories and but i wanted to find a really good story that would make the most impact for my feature film mm-hmm. And that's how I came across vanilla. A friend of mine had started working in the vanilla industry for a sustainable vanilla company. And vanilla was getting Mm -hmm. a lot of attention in the news because it was so expensive. It was like more than $500 a kilo or something like that. Like outrageously expensive. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. More more expensive than silver. And at first I thought, uh, you know, I heard that 
a part of the reason why that happened was because the crops were destroyed by these massive cyclones that had hit Madagascar, which of course mm -hmm. also destroyed people's homes and people's food and, and all of that. And um, so I thought, okay, this is like a really good story that combines something we all care about. We all use vanilla, but we don't know anything about, not even I knew anything really about vanilla at the time. Mm -hmm. And is is tied to climate change. And so I started researching the topic and I eventually started to realize that, that vanilla actually ties into a lot of things. Really, farmers' rights um, started looking into why these farmers could never escape poverty, despite the fact that vanilla is so expensive. And yeah, just really started to see not just climate change, but all these different forces combining and, and acting on these very vulnerable farmers. I mean, a lot of them are just out there in the rainforest. They don't even have electricity or access to the internet to, to really understand all the things that impact their lives, their, their everyday lives, and that are really kind of keeping them in poverty. That, that's really amazing. Um, is, it, is your documentary... So we say farmers, but is it women farmers primarily? Yeah, you know, is there a reason for that? Vanilla is farmed by both men and women. Mm -hmm. um, originally, I really wanted to focus on women because women's voices are often left out of of discussions when when dealing mm -hmm. with how to how to handle problems, how to legislate, mm -hmm. and things like that. I, a lot of the news stories that I were I was watching about mm -hmm. vanilla completely excluded women, and that frustrated me. Uh, and so I wanted to specifically focus on the women. But the other thing that I really learned about vanilla is. Vanilla is something that women can do, you know, even older women. And that's when, when I was there talking to the farmers, there are so many elderly women doing this because they can. It, it doesn't take physical strength. It takes a lot of time and a lot of work, but it's more of a diligence thing. and It doesn't take physical strength. And so mm -hmm. this, is, this was a great opportunity for a lot of women for them to to earn money mm -hmm. for themselves, which a lot of time in developing countries, women don't have. So that kind of strengthened really my focus on women for this. Yeah, um, that's a big issue with um, women in poverty. So th I'm imagining that this is this might be the only opportunity that they may have to earn money. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, that pretty much. I mean, definitely significant money. You know, vanilla <laughs> is a way to to earn like a good living which there are yeah. not a lot of those opportunities but you're also saying that it's kind of like the the factor the, i want to say factory farming like happens here in the states that seems to have control that are not allowing these women to earn what they are due is yes yeah and that is that is definitely true and that goes back to the colonialism, the history of colonialism in Madagascar, mm -hmm. uh, which is another thing we'll, we'll be addressing in the film through archival footage is the fact that mm -hmm. France controlled uh, Madagascar from the 1880s to the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who, who, you know, brought a lot of these crops like vanilla to Madagascar and really used Madagascar to create these spices. But they mm -hmm. put in so many uh, restrictions and so many more like industrial style of growing vanilla, which mm -hmm. isn't good for the vanilla. It isn't good for the environment there. And it isn't mm -hmm. good for the farmers. But because information kind of moves so slowly through, because it's, it's hard to get information to all of these people in remote places and it's hard to overcome a history of colonialism like that uh, so a lot of that remains a problem to this day and definitely hoping in this film to really address that and to use this film also in Madagascar to help um, spread the education about this issue to other farmers so 
we definitely plan to in in a lot of village in Mad villages in Madagascar, even in remote villages, they have little movie houses where everybody gathers to watch movies. So definitely going to show this film through Madagascar. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good. So yeah. is the, um, if there's a culprit in this film, I mean the hero is the farmer. Right? Yeah. Is, the, is the culprit like the the factory farmer? Who's who are we? I kind of want to. I kind of want to say who the bad guy is. It feels yeah. like to me, if anybody who blocked these women, which sounds like there's like a big conglomerate saying, kind of taking over. Is is there one in your film of like a bad guy? So there is, but I'm. I'll be honest with you, Ben. I'm going to avoid directly addressing the bad yeah. guy because what what has been happening especially lately to a lot of films is that you know if you're trying to directly go after say a big corporation with lots of money mm -hmm. your film gets shut down you might make it but nobody sees it uh, nobody uh, will distribute your film and oh a, I don't want that to happen to this film. But yeah. B, I want this film to bring up questions that and inspire people to go out and and will it'll be combined with an educational impact program also when we when we do the, we're going to do a world tour to museums and botanic gardens and things like that around the world. So we're going to bring more information that isn't directly addressed in the film. But mm -hmm. um, definitely the film will not answer all of the questions that it brings up. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, really there could be a part two of this. Oh, because, there could be many parts. That's true. <laughs> right. Because you can't possibly, if you can't possibly in an hour and a half film or an hour film. No, no. Ever... Oh, yeah, my God. No. Can, let me ask you this. Um this is, I mean, I'm not even sure how you'll answer this, but you're a first time film director, mm -hmm. right? You're a director, producer, you're probably writing it. Yes. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, you're a, a one woman show. Yeah, under. well, actually, I, I sort of, I have, I have okay. put together a pretty great team. I, I will say, okay. uh, I was, I've just been joined by a co director, co producer in Madagascar. Hmm. Her name is Gail Borgia, and she is actually a Malagasy, and she uh, last year won a Pulitzer Prize for work that she did exposing Russian interference into the Madagascar presidential election, which is pretty cool. Huh. She, <laughs> yeah, huh. she's super huh. cool. Um, uh, and I'm also working with a woman called Sierra Osterhout, which is – she was another Peace Corps volunteer who actually – worked lived and worked in a vanilla village and so and then she did her um re uh, research she's she's an anthropologist and uh, she did her research in this village so she's very closely connected to this community that's really great i gotta ask you um with everything that's been going on this past year covid lockdown masks um mm -hmm. not knowing i mean i know my life changed dramatically yeah how has your life changed if you want to go there or how has your ability to complete this project gone what have you had to kind of like jerry rig to, to even get where you are today yeah that's a good question because i'll be honest with you i had planned all these events last year to screen a little um teaser of the film and to, to raise money through these screenings and they all got shut down. <laughs> and at first, I was pretty devastated. <laughs> I just definitely went through this cycle of like, what am I doing with my life? And at the same time, I wasn't getting any work because I, I work as a freelance um, video journalist and, and camera operator. And I, I just... Swear, I thought you were going to say freelance biologist. <laughs> no. I'm a freelance well, biologist. I'm not, that does happen sometimes. You want to... <laughs> No, really? Is that a second thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Did, I have no idea. No. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> in doing a doing a environmental consulting for uh, yeah. uh, construction companies, but anyway, that's yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. I didn't. I was didn't have any work, and I was 
I was pretty down for a while. And what I ended up doing is I just kind of took that opportunity to start reaching out to people who I had been having a hard time getting a hold of. And all of a sudden, all of these people are available and they're willing to do a Zoom interview with me. And so I started yeah. talking to people all throughout the vanilla industry people in vanilla adjacent industries, I like to call them like chocolate um, researchers in coffee and vanilla and chocolate and all kinds of people. And so that's really how I ended up b building this cool team that I have now. So that was, that was, you know, what I, what I did. And I, I'm so thankful, I mean, to have this great team that I have now. And then I also in the second half of the year ended up getting uh, work with some some really cool reality TV shows, uh, Teen Mom and Sixteen yeah. and Pregnant. I, I ended up um, being a okay. camera operator on those shows, which was really fun okay. and and kept you know kept my camera skills up and yeah. So really it, cool. it, you know it turned out all right. <laughs> and That's now really, really now we're we've got momentum with, back with the film and things are happening and so that's really great. Is there a, um, like a release date? I mean. I think when you and I spoke, you said you're kind of still in the middle of the process. Yeah, or more for yeah we definitely want to capture this whole next year because just this year, the price of vanilla dropped drastically. And obviously mm -hmm. that's going to impact the vanilla farmers' lives if they if they aren't getting a, a good price for the vanilla. Mm -hmm. It also, just to point out, that last year, the the demand for vanilla increased like 500% because everybody oh, was at home making oh. all this, you know, comfort food. Right. So, I mean, I've only ever taken one economics class and that was like in ninth grade. But the, the mm -hmm. one thing that I remember is that when demand goes up, price goes up. Right. So why is the price dropping? Anyway, that's just one of those big questions out there. Yeah. Somebody, I mean, somebody <laughs> makes money on this yeah. and, that's kind of yes, and, it and it's the not farmers. the farmers. No, no, no. Gosh, that's just oh, so that's we will, we want to we want to capture all of that, and and the Mad Madagascar government is imposing their own price floor to try to make sure mm -hmm. that nobody can get these crazy low, you know. But that might end up meaning that none of the the farmers can sell any of their vanilla. So. It's very oh up in the air what's going to happen over this next year. Um, so we're definitely mm -hmm. going to capture all of that and then hopefully be finished with the film and editing by next August, uh, August 2022. August, August 2022. Yeah. Okay. And well, then... I'm already going to, I'm already going to say I want you back. Oh, good. Um, yes. <laughs> you know, the, the cuddle some more on that because I really yeah. want to find out. <laughs> I mean, it's like this whole next year will be completely different than what we just talked about. Oh, yeah. In all yeah, yeah, yeah. So that can be really fun. I, I need to ask you, because we're getting we're getting close to the finish mm -hmm. line here. Um, sleep has been a really big issue during this whole pandemic mm -hmm. year. And people I've talked to have kind of come up with their own sleeping rituals. I had one, uh, one person I spoke to who said that um, she listens to, like, horror type murder podcasts and i thought so and i'm like okay so, okay so i'm just curious i mean i don't i listen to like rain i have my mm. on my phone i listen to rain and um you know something that's not too but what are your sleep rituals or mm -hmm. do you have any anything you do that could you could tell people yeah i do so you know i never have trouble falling asleep my problem always happens when i wake up in the middle of the night freaking out about something that happened the day before <laughs> and so okay. this i have this ritual where i keep a notebook by my bed and this actually i started this i when i took a comedy writing class and the teacher suggested that we uh, at the end of the day think about everything that happened that day and try to make jokes about everything that happened and what i found was this is a really good way to go through my day and check my mindset you know you know, how how did i react to things during the day because you know, your, your mindset determines everything. You can either see everything as, as a, a battle that, you know, the world is against you and, and all of that, or you can see things 
as benefiting you in some way, right? And I mean, this not only affects your sleep, this affects your life and whether or not you're happy or you're miserable. And there's, there's plenty of people out there right now that want you to feel attacked by everything. And that's just not going to help you with anything in your life. And it's definitely not going to help you with your sleep. So I keep a notebook and I write down like everything that happened. And then I think about that. I think about reframing everything in a positive light as something um, that will benefit Mm me. And that's my ritual. And that helps you you fall back asleep once you kind of release that. I haven't, since I've started doing that, I haven't woken up in the middle of the night freaking out about anything yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I'm I've been doing it for a while. Really, I'm reading this really fantastic book. I love books. I'm Okay, when I say read, it's all audible. But mm. I say read because I say I'm hearing all these books. I, <laughs> just, anyway, I love audible. So I'm reading a book called Mindset by Dr. Carol. Uh, Dr. Carol Dweck. It's amazing. Uh-huh. It's all about the, it's about the, um, like the growth mindset of the fixed mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, just right in line with another book I love by Simon Sinek called The Infinite Game, which again is about that, those same two things. So I really believe that, I don't even know for me if it's putting everything in a positive light as opposed to just putting everything out there and realizing what it is. Because mm-hmm. I think sometimes that deal with something it's like this is the most worst place anything could exist <laughs> yeah yeah until you voice it like you're putting a voice to these women right who honestly i don't know how many people have ever heard of this i know i haven't and i think that's why i was so drawn to bring you in to say let's chat about this but i really do believe that getting it out there so i love the fact that you do that i think that's absolutely brilliant um tell everybody um how we can reach you but i'm gonna i'm gonna put all your info in the description and um so they'll get all that but if you want to just tell people uh what's the best way to reach you yeah well i want to say that now until april 14th we're doing a crowdfunding campaign for the film on seed and spark so people have the opportunity to contribute to an impactful film and maybe get your name in the film and things like that there's fun rewards awesome so that's at seedandspark.com, and you just look for um, Voice of Vanilla. But we also have a website, voiceofvanilla.com, and you can reach me through the website. Uh, and also our, our social media channels, which are all at Voice of Vanilla. So Twitter, awesome. Facebook, Instagram, of course. Now I have you sent me all of your all of what you just said. Except, do I have the crowdfunding information? Um, if not, get. Okay, I will give that to you. I can't remember. But, yeah, because yeah. I think, honestly, I think it's important, and I think many people might want to contribute or want to contribute because it's really amazing. Um, gosh, I, I have a thousand questions, but time. Yeah. <laughs> so let me just say this. Thank you. Thank you for being on Sleeping With Ben. Thank you for the cuddle. Thank you for telling us all about Voice of Vanilla and your journey. I, I feel like I could do another couple of hours and I definitely <laughs> want to talk to you again in a year to see where you're at and where the film is at. And hopefully we can have yeah. a brand new discussion. So let me just say, thank you, Maureen. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody for watching uh, Sleeping With Ben. I enjoyed uh, cuddling with all of you. <laughs>